Hi, I'm Ben with RA3D Redux, and we're going to cover the swerve drive that we've prepped before build season for the build. One of the reasons that we prepped a swerve drive before the build is so we have a drive for that the programmers can use immediately as soon as the game is released. Um, so they can start testing things. There's obviously, there could be some changes in the game that's been different from more recent games that make it so we have to deal with obstacles to climb or things of that nature. And if we have to have those issues, then we'll make those uh, modifications as we go here. But the point here is we have a Swerve drive ready to go so our programmers can start working on Swerve code and getting that optimized. And we can make modifications from the drive uh, to the drive later. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. We also have a second set of modules so we can work on the other drive that will actually be used while they work on programming this drive. It's very useful to have um, two robots going. Um, with two separate control systems, because then with, uh, with the three-day build, there's not a whole lot of time. So we're trying to make it so we can optimize the time every single possible way we can. Um, so these are Swerve Drive Specialties, uh, MK4i modules. Um, these were pretty, pretty easy to put together, let me say. Um, they've, uh, Patrick's got a great YouTube video up there that easily steps through, and the module itself is very intuitive. Um, the, uh, we had a group and we put together eight modules rather quickly. Um, now with this, the, uh, the modules we've got rev motors on them. So these are the, the Neo 1.1s uh, that have recently come out here. Um, so uh, it, it's, all, it's all set up uh, on here. Very, very, very robust module we got. Um, it, it's going, hopefully... Hopefully it'll turn out pretty good. I, it's there's been a lot of teams that have had a lot of success with these, so I'm not super worried there. We've got the Thrifty Bot encoders, so they're all wired here. You see, down to the analog port of our Robo Rio. The the modules put together nicely. That if we do end up having to climb something, we could flip this plate to the top. Um, so then we'll have more of a wheel drop, and even potentially, even though the plate's not configured this way, we could look at flipping the motors over. Uh, to put them on top. So we've got a couple um, a couple alternatives here if we end up having to climb for some reason. Looking at the robot itself, um, we've got two control systems here at RI3D Redux. This one has the Cross the Road Electronics PDP, or uh, PD, uh, so yeah, it's PDP for that one. And we have the Rev PDH, as well over here. So this one, uh, this one's going to be for the second robot. That's what we're planning here. So slightly different control systems for both. Um, we've got pneumatics wired in. We've got pneumatics purchased from Andy Mark. So we've got our uh, our Vier compressor, um, as well as the uh, a lot of the standard um, lightweight pneumatic regulator and uh, engages and things of that nature for um, that you need for your pneumatic system. Um, we've got a PCM right here. Roborio also purchased from Andy Mark. Mavex purchased from Andy Mark. Additionally, we've got all of our Spark Maxes wired up and then they're all wired into the um, into our PDP. Now with that, we put all the steering motors into 30 amps because they don't need quite as much power going, or quite as much amperage, excuse me, going to them. Um, and then we've got all of our drive motors going to 40 amps. So that gives us options to use both 40 amps and 30 amps for our mechanisms. Um, beyond, beyond that, uh, the belly pan here, this was acquired from a 
old 1756 robot, FRC 1756, so we cut off the corners and it fit well for this belly pan so that way we could put that together. Um, if you're a team and you're looking to uh, do some of this prep for the build season, a lot of what we have here uh, we've done so we could get ahead and you have a little more, more time in our three days. Um, but what you could do essentially is you could build it, take it all apart, except for, and then each one of your sword modules, just pop one motor off because I believe it's one motor uh, can be attached to a subsystem. Um, so then you could get into compliance for the build season. Um, yeah, with that, I think that, uh, that pretty much overviews the, the swerve drive. Uh, oh, well, I forgot actually the bumpers. Uh, we've got ballistic nylon, purchased that from Amazon here. Um, it's uh, backed obviously by three quarter inch plywood. So along with that, we've uh, just got a little bit of simple mounting with angle brackets all around the robot. We've set it up uh, this particular way because we want to have two open frames and closed frames um, with the swerve drive so we can test a number of different intakes uh, pretty much immediately as soon as we get the ability to um, when, the, uh, when the game is released here. So this gives us a number of configurations we can do over the bumper intakes, we can do through through uh, a cutout in the bumper intakes, um, all, works, uh, all works pretty good. Uh, one, one more uh, additional thing on this, so this is obviously two by one tubing um, Andy Mark, you can purchase it from, it's, uh, it's super useful for that. Um, it, it's a uh, 16th wall and plenty strong for, for this particular application. Um, with that, that is our swerve drive and looking forward to seeing everyone in the, uh, for the new game and hope you tune into the stream. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Thank you to all of our suppliers and sponsors for the Robot in 3 Days Redux and Kettering Bulldogs programs.